she saw a golden table come rising up out of the water. She saw a half woman, what appeared to be a fish's tail. Do you believe in mermaids? I know a few, but since they're private people who have never been captured by scientists, I've had to rely on the World Wide Web for today's stories. And you're never going to believe what scientists have found over the years. So in Minnesota, a group of doctors and security guards were caught on camera engaging in suspicious activity. So somebody was like, hey, y'all look a little sus, we're going to record this. They witnessed a body being lifted by the doctors and placed on a stretcher. So we have a clip, which Yay! But it shows a green tail floating in the water, and the tail of the creature that was being carried clearly resembles that of a mermaid. Well, the video quality isn't the best. The tail was visible enough to add fuel to the belief in mermaids, and also kind of looks like Ariel's, which besides the point. So a lot of folks have urged viewers to keep an open mind and ask, like, why would someone go to the trouble of staging an elaborate hoax? Why would this be happening if it wasn't real? It doesn't look like a sketch. I don't know of any weird shorts that involve this. According to Paranormal Elite, a YouTube channel which was sent the footage, the person who filmed it stayed behind after the beach was cleared. And the man, identified only as Mackie, said that large vehicles arrived along with people wearing hazmat suits to protect them from dangerous materials. Look, it sounds very Area 51 levels of sus if you're asking me, and since you're still here, I'm assuming you're asking me. The person who captured it believes this footage does show proof of mermaids. So apparently he's from Australia, and back there, there are a lot of stories of humanoid creatures with fish-like tails, and we'll get to that in a moment. He was just surprised to see something like this being pulled out of a freshwater lake instead of a saltwater one, but like, I've seen weirder. What do you think, folks? Let me know in the comments, because I'm calling this one real. So a centuries old mummified mermaid that scientists recently revealed is even weirder than they previously thought. So in 2022, researchers discovered that this mermaid over in Japan, which is about 12 inches long and it was lying inside a sealed wooden box in a temple, was really something. So at the time they're like, okay, maybe it's um, part of a monkey sewed onto a fish without, you know, the top part's body. It describes a creature from Japanese mythology known as a ningyo, which is a fish-like creature with a human head that is able to help cure disease and increase longevity. It's their mermaid myth, folks. It is believed that one such creature appeared to a prince in an area northeast of Kyoto. This prince was a semi-legendary figure, Prince Shotoku. He was revered for his many political and cultural innovations, most notably for encouraging the spread of Buddhism. So the creature that we're talking about today. It was once a fisherman who had trespassed a fish in protected waters and as punishment it was transformed into this mythical creature and it called upon the prince to absolve him of his crimes. Makes sense. The mermaid asked the prince to create a temple where his mummified body could be displayed as a reminder to people about, you know, how precious life is. And remains matching the description can be found in the Tenshu Kyusha shrine where it is cared for by priests. There's been a lot of stories of mermaids in Japanese folklore throughout the years. This isn't just a Western folklore thing. So if we're gonna go to talk specifically about this one hybrid, this very haunting hybrid, it was on display in a glass case at a temple for like a while. And then it was stored away for 40 years. Kind of like how museums rotate their exhibits, you know, it just it gets shoved in a closet, we forget about it. A letter inside the mummy's box claimed the specimen was caught by a fisher. Sometime between 1736 and 1741, granted, most mermaids folks, I'm sorry to say this, kind of hoaxes, we'll get to that later. Um, so we're not quite sure when this mermaid came to be, but researchers from the Kurashiki University of Science and the Arts, or KUSA, took possession of the mermaid in February of 2022 with permission from the temple's priests. We're not violating anything here, folks. And they began studying the eerie artifact using a range of techniques. We're talking x-ray, CT, radiocarbon, electron microscopy, DNA analysis. You name it, they did it. So. When I say scientist, I mean scientist. Now, it got to the point where the team did release their findings in a statement, and what they found was a bit more bizarre than I expected. And that's saying something. So, the results showed the mermaid's torso was not a monkey. That is kind of traditional around here. It was cloth. It was like a paper mache. There was metal pins running from the neck to the lower back. It was a mixture of sand and charcoal, but the torso was covered in components that were taken from other animals. Mammal hair, fish skin, likely from a puffer fish. Covered, it all covered parts of the arms, the shoulders, the neck, the cheeks. The jaw and teeth were taken from a predatory fish. Its claws were made from keratin. I mean, they likely came from something real, but it couldn't be identified. Uh, the lower half of the mermaid did come from a fish, likely a species of croaker, which is a ray finned fish. That it makes a croaking sound. I know. Obvious, but I like to explain. The croaking helps to control its buoyancy. 
there's a point to things. Now, the researchers were not able to identify any complete DNA from the mermaid. Once again, they called it a mermaid, but radiocarbon dating of the scale indicates that they could date back as far as the early 1800s. Now, there's 14 other mermaids that have been found in Japan, and I know the team's working on them, so maybe sometime soon, these scientists are going to tell us stuff about other real mermaids. Fiji mermaids gained popularity in the United States when P.T. Barnum put one on display at his American Museum in New York back in 1842, so a lot of folks thought it came from Japan. Kind of relevant to my last point? They thought it was created by a Japanese fisherman who sold it to a sailor who sold it to an American captain, one Samuel Barrett Eads. And it cost him $6,000, which is over a hundred grand in today's money. He didn't have all the money in hand, so he actually borrowed some from his ship's expense account, and he was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna totally replace it. Uh, yeah, the company kind of figured it out, legal action was taken, but he did repay the money over time and hey, he got to keep the mermaid. He displayed it in London, and apparently like hundreds of people came to see this because like, Obviously, it's a mermaid. Pretty cool. Now, it got to the point where I believe one William Clift of the Royal College of Surgeons examined the mermaid and was like, um, this is a fake. So by like 1823, a year later, they were like, okay, we all know it's a fake. Let's get rid of this mermaid. So when Eads passed away, he willed the mermaid to his son, and the son was like, I don't want it. He sold it to the Boston Museum in 1942. Now Moses Kimball at the Boston Museum showed it to P.T. Barnum, and Barnum was like, absolutely, I want this. But before he did, he showed it to a naturalist and was like, hey, and the expert was like, hey, obviously it's a fake, mermaids don't exist. Now P.T. Barnum didn't have any issues with fictitious items, but he wanted to have some authenticity to it, so he made up this big backstory. He had letters sent to New York newspapers from across the country claiming to have met a Dr. Griffin. And it was like, hey, we know about mermaids. The press was like, oh yeah, no, we've seen this photo of Dr. Griffin going into a hotel. That's where he's showing the mermaid to the press. Dr. Griffin worked at the British Lyceum of Natural History, and he found this mermaid in South America. Okay, Dr. Griffin and the British Lyceum of blah, blah, blah never existed. But hey, there was this whole public disagreement between Dr. Griffin and Barnum that was a big kerfuffle. It's like, no, you cannot display the mermaid. So obviously the public was like, ooh, drama gossip and it was like okay Dr. Griffin says you can display it. So like many of Barnum's oddities, the mermaid became a huge attraction and has left a legacy that is still incredible to this day. So there's photos of a mermaid, possibly a mermaid alien, washing ashore on an Australian beach that has sent the internet into a bit of a tizzy. Remember how I said Australia earlier? I told you I'd get to it. So this macabre looking thing first came to light via a post in the Marine Biology Facebook group. And uh, I know the bad pun, but like it made some waves online. So Bobby Lee Oates was the person who uploaded it and said it was exactly like a mermaid shape. She stumbled across these while walking across the beach, I believe it was in Queensland, and she said, yeah, I was just driving along the beach looking for a campsite, and she saw this thing. She's like, it skull looked kind of human-like. So she stopped, she was confused, and she's like, what on earth could this be? Why does it look like a human skull? So there's photos, and it shows the oceanic enigma, and yeah, it does boast a dome-shaped humanoid skull. So it's got some ribs that kind of look alien-like, and uh, it's got this elongated jawline, hair similar to that of a cow or a kangaroo, but then there's the missing hair because decomposition. But the witness was like, yeah, it was exactly like a mermaid shape, it was hairy, had some sort of tail or limb of some sort, and she was just kind of shocked that it was human-like. Originally, she thought she discovered some miracle new species, and she turned to Facebook. She's like, hey, uh, anybody have any idea what this could be, or how do I find out what it is? So armchair biologists were like, yeah, no, it uh, doesn't look like a marine animal. It's uh, hairy. And other folks were like, okay, yep, it's a mermaid. Talk to the police. That looks human. Uh, some folks think it's non-mythological, but like, come on, folks. And that's all for today, folks. I've been Alexa, resident Yuki Spooky Girly. See ya!